Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and we are back for part 5 of Bendy and the Ink Machine Revisited. This is of course our return playthrough to Bendy and the Ink Machine and the world of Joey Drew Studios, and in this video we're going to be playing through the final chapter, chapter 5, so this will bring us to the end of this revisit. With that said guys, I'm going to dive into chapter 5, and I'll be quiet for the beginning of this video, because it does have a rather long intro between Henry and Alice and Angel, so I'll let you watch that, and then I'll join you for the gameplay thereafter. Everyone knows that song. Who are you? Why are you here? I was invited by an old friend. And now I can't leave. Then you know more than we do. One minute, we don't even exist. Just... thoughts. And the next minute... this place. Are you gonna let me out of here? Down here, strangers aren't good things. How can we trust you? We don't even know what you are. My name is Henry. I used to work here. I... I honestly don't know my name. So, they call me Alice. But I'm no angel. You go back and rest. We'll talk again later. Only for a few hours. No need to worry. I won't go far. Only up to level six. Just stay here. Keep an eye on Henry, okay? I'll be back as soon as I can. I promise. This isn't good. You can actually see on the right, guys, as I said, the mechanical arm, which looks like it's been pulled from the bendy robot in Chapter 4. Henry? Here. You must be hungry. That does not look appetizing. Sorry. It's all we have. Yeah, I wouldn't eat that, I don't think. Maybe just take it away. That's right. He's got it in for us, though. I mean, maybe we should eat that. It's better than nothing, but now we don't have the option. Tom Boris just smashing it on the floor there. There's some more on the side, though. They can just cook us up a fresh batch. It's fine. I know you're watching me. It's just... a little creepy. You're the one that writes on the walls. We all do. For some poor souls down here, it's the only way they can be heard. But you don't want to touch the ink for too long. It can claim you. Pull you back. That's how I met Tom. I was messing with things I shouldn't have been, and he... He was there. Why do you call him Tom? He just seems to respond to it. Well, I don't think he's very fond of me. Let me show you something. A while back, I was mapping out one of the upper levels when I noticed something reflecting off a piece of glass. I held up the glass, looked through, and on the wall behind me was a hidden message. Right there, in plain sight. So I kept looking, and found more and more messages everywhere in the studio. But you can't see them with your eyes. Only through this. Take a look. I don't know who's leaving them. But I think they know how to get out of here. She will leave you for dead. What does it all lead to? That's not good. Nowhere. I followed them for a long time. Just leads me in circles. I don't think I meant to leave this place, Henry. But maybe... You are. Alice. Please let me out of here. Tom thinks you're dangerous. And what do you think? Think. You're the hope I've been waiting for. Go to sleep. Maybe tomorrow will be better. 
That's our ticket out of here, guys. Just pretend like we know everything she wants to know, and we'll get out. That was really stupid, Tom. You shouldn't have gone out there. Now that he's seen you, it's only a matter of time before he finds us here. He really doesn't like us, does he? I don't know why Tom has such a resentment for Henry. I guess he just doesn't trust anyone. We can't just leave him. Not with the ink demon right outside the door. What's going on? He's coming. We have to move on. Tom, we have to let him out. No, they're gonna have to leave us. Sorry. How dare you? Well, they've gone. We're all alone. We've got to survive, but we do have a looking glass tool. And of course, if we turn around here, we can see all of these weird messages. It says it's inside the vault. Let me out of here. Escape. So many questions follow me. I think this is actually, these messages are actually secret messages potentially left by the character Audrey from Bendy and the Dark Revival, the upcoming game, because she has that weird glowing sort of signage around her fingers and around her arm. And I believe she is the one writing these messages and this was actually a teaser for the new game the whole time. Now, last year I did make a theory about that, which I will leave maybe linked at the end of this video if you're interested. But either way, I do believe these secret messages that everyone's seeing have been left by none other than Audrey, the character from Bendy and the Dark Revival. So that is very interesting. So she's trying to leave messages to help him out here. The first message, of course, leading us to take this spoon. And when we take it, it opens a secret panel, which says, look inside. We look inside the top of the toilet here, and we get a little gent pipe, which helps us escape. So there we go. That's how we get out the room. And that's just a little theory as to who is leaving those secret messages. You also see that we've got this strange sort of drawing that Alison has drawn here. I believe that Alison Angel and Tom Boris are actually Alison Pendle and Thomas Connor, and they actually married. They're workers at the studio that actually married in real life and then have got dragged back into the studio by Joey Drew. This is their home in real life, I think, their little sort of country home that they talk about in the letter. This is the meeting inside the ink machine, of course. That's Alison coming out of the ink saying boo. And then, of course, there's this message here, choose to be happy. And it just seems basically like these two act a bit like a couple. And I think they've kind of re-met in the ink machine after Joey Drew has basically killed them off in some way and reanimated them inside this cartoony world. So that is an interesting theory, guys. Of course, we don't know for sure. There we go. That's just my thoughts on that. This little fish is a secret as well. This is the creative director, well, his little sort of logo at Joey Drew Studios, a guy called Bookpass, who you can follow in Twitter if you want to go and follow along his bendy journey at the studio but there's another little secret we have a lot of clues as to this tom boris character being thomas connor all the wrenches the workbench table the maintenance hat over here we know thomas connor worked in maintenance at the studio as part of the gent team maintaining the ink machine so there we go anyway we're gonna head on guys because i've been blabbing in that room for quite some time kill this searcher and head on to the docks to meet or to try and catch up with allison and tom boris Right, here we go, guys. They're escaping, of course. Thanks for waiting to see if I could get out myself. I'll just take the second boat, then. Right, let's journey into the darkness ahead and see what we can find. Turn it on and power it up. I always loved this part of Chapter 5. It kind of felt... I don't know, like they were being a little bit more ambitious with the scope of the design of the game, I guess. And this feels like something straight out of, I don't know, a Resident Evil game or something. I think it's really cool. Oh, well, there's where Tom and Allison stopped off. Maybe we can join them. Sounds oh. like something stuck in the paddle wheel. Oh, but a giant hand comes out, which isn't good. And claims their boat, so we better get out of here. Not going to hang around to find out what that giant bendy hand belongs to. 
I made a theory like a long time ago as to what I believed that hand actually was. If you want to go and check that out guys, it's somewhere on the channel. But for now, we're not going to worry about what that hand is. We're just going to get away from it. And hopefully, I was going to say the paddle wheel doesn't block up again, but of course it does. Right, let's go. I like how they've like lit these tunnels with these little fairy lights. It's kind of cute, making them a little bit more happy and a little bit less creepy. Whenever you see a flashing light up ahead in a video game, it means bad news. There's a hand. Okay, we're going to go. That was close. I don't know if you guys saw that. It kind of briefly showed up for a second there, but it was very close to us. Let's navigate round here. We'll get out of here in no time, I'm sure of it. This section does go on a little long, though. I think if they had wanted this section to go on for this long, it could have been sort of beneficial to balance it out with some additional gameplay mechanics, but I'm guessing they were just trying to finish up the game at this point and get it out for everyone, so... I'm sure the sequel will bring some more ambition to these kind of moments, as they've been working like for a very long time now. And I'm very much looking forward to it. I, I do hope that the Dark Revival has like a lot more sections like this in it. Um, maybe not quite so linear, but, you know, big moments like this. That would definitely be awesome. Oh, that was very close, guys. I didn't realise there was a third one stuck on the paddle wheel there. But now we have escaped the hand. He's gone away. He doesn't like this area. Maybe it's too shallow. You can see the little lost one up there fishing, which I always think is really cute. And this is their secret sort of shanty town that they've built. So this is where all the abominations of the studio live together and have their own little community down here. Again, that's kind of sweet that they've built such a place, I guess. And you can see they have put lots of Sammy's little quotes down here. Down here we're all sinners. It's time to believe. He will set us free. It seems like Sammy basically leads all the lost ones and they follow his instructions. And here it says, not monsters. If we get the looking glass out, it says, once people now fallen into despair. So it's really just giving us some extra lore and story exploration if we needed it. And there's Sammy. He's back. We've got to just take him down a peg or two. Come on, Sammy. All right, I'm going to run. No, we died. This is our first death, actually, guys. It's our first chance to see, basically, how Henry is reborn once he dies through the ink. Which Alice Angel, of course, talked about earlier. There we go. We've taken down Sammy. He's just going to run away now. He doesn't like to be seen without his mask. He's like, I'm deformed. But really, he just kind of looks the same without his mask. Just no facial features, really. So see what, see if we can soothe his feelings. You know, make him feel better. You lied to me. You said I'd be free. Well, I'm going to free you now. Free your head right off your shoulders. Finally, Sheesh. Tom has come to help us. It's time for sleep. Boom. That's gonna hurt. I think this is actually one of the bits that shocked me most in the game because it's quite savage, you know, to see an axe get sunk into Sammy's head there, especially for like a T-rated game. It's a bit brutal, isn't it? More like what you'd expect from an Outlast or Resident Evil game. Oh, that was close. You're lucky we were in the neighborhood. Oh, they're emerging. Was that him? I don't think so. The searchers and the lost ones built this place. Sammy must have been keeping them at bay. Now that he's gone. Looks like we're in for a fight. Get ready. Okay. Now for the most protracted fight in video game history. This fight goes on for a very, very long time, guys. A little bit too long in my opinion. I think they were trying to make it really epic, but it kind of feels a little bit convoluted. A little bit dragged out. But still, a fun moment. Basically... We get to fight alongside Allison Angel and Tom Boris, and I'm going to die as well. <laughs> it's not good. Um, which is kind of cool. I always thought this 
sequence was pretty awesome when it first uh, was when I first experienced it. Especially when we get, like, as you can see, the Lost Ones joining Refrain now. And I always like the way that the Lost Ones walked. I think they kind of march very much like the uh, broomsticks that come to life in Fantasia. I've always thought, is that, like, something they did on purpose? Because they've really animated them a little bit like those walking broomsticks in Fantasia. And I like to think that that was maybe their inspiration there, because quite charming if it was. They've definitely got a lot of personality to the way they march around. And again, I really can't see how I can't wait to see how they look in Dark Revival. Like the searchers, obviously we've seen they have a little bit more character in the trailer for Dark Revival. They have stuff like hair, more facial features, there's female and male uh, variants. Like they have much more personality in Dark Revival. There's actually a trophy I don't have in the PS4 version, which I might try and go for soon where you have to get the most kills out of everyone in this section and you get like a trophy for it. Um, I guess it's the same with the achievements on Xbox. I've never seen this many before. But I've never managed to get it because it's brutally hard. Those guys really go for it and get a lot of kills between them. So you do have to be very fast in order to get that trophy and put yourself at risk a lot of the time. But I think I'm going to try and maybe go for it and if I ever get it, I'll put it on my Twitter feed. <laughs> and show you guys that I finally got the platinum for that game because I've literally got every other trophy in the PlayStation version apart from that. Can do this. Keep fighting. Right, here we go guys. It's got to be near the end now, I think. This should be the final wave. Let's give ourselves some space here. There we go. Excellent. Good work, guys. I think that's all of them. Good work. But you never know where they're going to crawl out of next. <laughs> Probably best if we stay together from now on. That's what I said to begin Henry? with. Think you can lead the way? Yeah, sure. Let me lead the way for us. This way looks perfectly safe. Right, guys? Okay, I'll go first, just to make sure it's safe. Oh. Well, at least, uh, you know, I don't hurt myself when I fall that far. It's inside the vault. We'll have to wait and see what's inside the vault, guys. Today's appointments, this is kind of a cool easter egg. You'll see, for example, we've got at 10.15 F. Fontaine. That's Frank Fontaine, or a reference to him, from Bioshock, which is one of, I think, the Meatly's favourite games, and a game that really inspired the design of this one. Charles and the Prodigies, that was an old YouTuber called Prod Charles. He used to also make bendy theories uh, back in the day. Uh, that puppet guy, obviously, I'm guessing the Meatly, that's a reference to. So we've got some others that I'm not picking up on off the top of my head here, guys. But yeah, there's lots of secrets in that list, kind of like little in-jokes and references. Now, we've got the film vault over here, so I am going to take you inside of here. Now that's interesting. And just show you this. This is a puzzle we need to now solve. We need to rebuild these ink pipes to allow us into the film vault, which is currently flooded. We need to drain that. But first, if we go into this room, we have a rather interesting audio log by none other than Thomas Connor himself. Members report to check home office. Client, Joey Drew Studios. Although we're making progress, the client's expectations keep changing. What started as a machine to simply mold life-size figures now seems to be teetering on the edge of magic more than engineering. Although Mr. Drew remains convinced they're the same thing. The process of running the cartoon film through the machine for the figures to imprint upon themselves is going well. We've had several near successes. One weird note, the first figure ever created was a failed attempt in the likeness of the character called Bendy. Since that time, no other attempts of this particular figure have emerged. And the one that did? I don't know. There's just something unworldly about him. Thomas Connor there talking about, and here's, before I go into that, here's another reference that shows that it's likely Thomas Connor is Boris because we've actually got Boris inside his toolbox there. He's basically saying that the ink machine was slowly sort of working, bringing cartoon templates to life, but they were acting weird and we find out that's because they didn't have a soul. The first creation, of course, being Bendy himself, which is why he's an inky abomination because he was brought to life in the early days of experimentation and without a soul, causing him to act so strangely and so kind of like ghoulishly, I suppose. 
I'm going to play you all the audio logs in this section, guys. We're going to sneak around, and I'm also going to show you a quick way to defeat the Butcher Gang members. The first one is going to be Joey Drew's audio log, which is just in this room here. Not these guys again. I better stay out of sight. Small memo to all administration offices. Rumors have begun to fly that we simply can't tolerate any longer. The idea that the company is in some form of financial difficulty is untrue. And a slanderous lie against us. It's also been known to me that some backroom incompetents are not trusting in my leadership. As a leader, I'm always steering the boat, guiding our destiny, looking at the big picture. No need for you people to worry about such complicated things. Just do whatever it is you do and trust your leader. Which is me. So Joey's obviously just trying to do whatever he can to, you know, calm people's nerves and not get them asking questions. Next we have an audio log from Wally Franks in this room. So it turns out it's my lucky day. I got to clean in some of the offices around 2am last night. And what do you think I find on one of the chairs? A big freaking chocolate cake just sitting there, practically yelling my name. You know, I work hard. I earn my pay every darn dollar. But you know what this company's missing? Little bit of knitting points. And this here cake, it's a point. Hopefully no one finds out what I've done. Because if they did, I can tell you what would happen. I'm out of here. So we can hear, of course, Wally up to his old tricks again, taking cake that wasn't his. That could be a portal reference again. Cake plays into portal quite heavily. But it could also show that the cake maybe had something to do with Wally's demise eventually. Although we do see him writing to uh, Joey after leaving the studio, so it's a hard one to call there. Also, there should be a final audio log in this room, guys, from Joey Drew. So we'll take a listen to this. Listen, Tommy, I know you boys over at Jen are doing your best, but I'm paying for living attractions, not weird abominations. Whatever that great thing was I saw wandering around your office, you better keep it locked up tight. I realize it was a first attempt, but imagine if the press caught sight of it. Might scare off investors. And in response to your previous memo, if you claim that your failures are because these things are soulless, then damn it, we'll give them a soul. After all, I own thousands of them. This is the most creepy audio log of them all, I think. It's showing that Joey was willing to give up his workers' lives and their souls to bring his cartoon creations to life, to, you know, make these uh, walking, talking cartoons for his bendy land with real human souls. And just going to show the lengths that Joey goes to in order to get what he wants in life. Pretty uh, sick and twisted, right? So we're going to go into Joey's office now, guys. This is the final audio log. This is from Joey Drew to Susie Campbell, where he talks her basically into becoming Alice Angel. I know how much this part means to you, Susie. Alice means a lot to me, too. Gosh, all of my characters do. In fact, I'll let you in on a little secret. I, too, really believe my characters are more than just drawings. They're alive. They're part of us. I want people to know them as well as I do. I want people to be able to shake their hand, spend an afternoon with them, love them. Susie, I'll be straight with you. I'm putting together a small project, a little ceremony. What? A lot of dreams will come true. And I want you to be a part of it. I want you to bring Alice to life once again. What do you say? There you have it guys, that is how he talked Susie into becoming Alice Angel and of course she took the bait because she really loved the character. If you open Joey's desk drawers here you can see all the individual items that he was going to use for ritual from the different characters, uh, different workers at the studio, which is just a cool like little easter egg there as well. Now we're going to pick up the ink and we're actually going to aggro all of these Butcher Gang members because what we want to do is we want to bring them all together into the main hall so that Bendy can deal with them all at once and that gives us a clean run back and forth to the ink. So we now have all three of them hot on our tail. We just need to get back to that ink machine to deposit the ink and as soon as we power it up it will actually kind of spawn Bendy into the area and then if we can survive for a few seconds longer Bendy will take out 
the Butcher Gang members. And this is a really useful tip if you just want to get through this area quickly. So let's just put that in there. Start that off. Run. And you'll see them die now. There you go. Nice. Thanks, Bendy. Look at that. He helped us out there, right? You can see he's just up there. I don't know if you can actually spot him. Just walking on the gallery at the top. Along the gallery at the top there. So, that's done. And now, guys, I'm actually going to go and get all the ink. I'm going to cut away this section because you don't want to see me just grab all the ink individually. But I'm going to get all the ink and all the pipes and solve that pipe puzzle. Alright, guys, here is the third ink blob that we needed. And I'm just going to take that to the machine, deposit it in there, and produce the final pipe that we need. It should be this kind of T-shaped one here. Now we head over to the film vault. We place this into the set of pipes here. I've already got the other two. Let's put that one at the top. And now you can see we've drained the ink from this room. And we can head on into the film vault. Where all of Joey's secrets have been kept, as you can see. So let's head on in here. Now if we open this up. You can actually listen to this radio, which has a song by uh, Alice Angel on there. I'm not going to do that, guys, because if we do that, I will get copyright striked. But it is cool to see that it's there. There's also a message here which says the demon has taken it. And if we look in the box, there's nothing but sort of ink in there now. Looks like whatever was here was taken long ago. How did you get down here? It pays to carry a rope. You should try it. Sassy. Look. Very sassy. I know where we have to go, but it's not going to be pleasant. The Ink Demon has something that we need. I'm going after him. You want to go to his lair? Are you crazy? That's death. That's where the trail seems to lead. <sighs> well, it's probably close by. Probably through that door. But it won't be easy to open. I'll need three gears, a crowbar, some kind of counterbalance. Or just his fist. Huh. Well, that works too. Good work. You've redeemed yourself. You've helped me against Sammy. You smashed the door open. I forgive you for leaving me behind. But don't just stare at me like that's weird. Okay, let's head on. And here's where things start to get really weird, of course. We've got all these repeating rooms from... The beginning of the studio, including, of course, Henry's old desk here, as you can see here, reappearing. Which kind of just shows the studio is perhaps evolving and ever-changing due to the will of the ink machine. Quiet. Don't make any noise. Everybody be calm. It's fine. Just stay calm. Let him pass. And we'll head on. To the way that says death, that sounds great. Let's do it. And there's the, the little ink machine we saw at the start in chapter one, all the way down to the bottom of the studio onto this giant, colossal ink machine. This before. I don't see any way around. Nothing to build a raft with. We'll have to wait across. We can't. We're not like you, Henry. If we go in there, well. A drop of water in the ocean is rarely seen again. And I guess it's all up to me. And I don't even know what I'm doing here. I don't even know why this is all happening to me. You're here for a reason, Henry. There's always a reason. Even when you can't understand it. It's time. Set us free. Okay, cool. Will do. Just go on my own, shall I? Okay, so they can't cross the ink because they'll just sort of evaporate into it. Henry can, of course, so I guess it's up to us to say goodbye to you guys and uh, head on for the final battle against Bendy into this giant ink machine, which is what I believe is powering this entire world, this cartoon world we're trapped inside. So let's go. They could have at least given me a weapon. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. 
There's a little secret here, guys. There's a little chest here, and this is, of course, the chest from the Bendy mobile game, which is called Nightmare Run, I believe, and that's sort of a runner game that you can get on mobile phone. And there was this chest called Chester in there, like a pirate chest which chased you with tentacles. That's a little 3D model of him in this game as a secret. Let's head down here then, see what secrets we find in the ink machine. I still remember my name, that's kind of sad, okay. And then here we get to see sort of how the ink machine created characters. So we can see there a lost one, and then a more evolved form over here. The Boris clone, which came out quite nicely as you can see, that looks pretty much like a, a Boris, and that will eventually be born out of the ink machine. Now we head into the central core, the throne room. As you can see, that's Joey Drew's chair there that's been taken by Bendy. We've got lots of projectors there, obviously taken from the heads of the projectionists roaming the studio. And then all of these cartoons here, which is kind of cute, like the old car Bendy cartoons, many of which have been released subsequently on YouTube, and you can go and check those out on the Joey Drew Studio YouTube channel. But it's kind of nice to see, you know, just some of the cartoons that didn't show up in other promotional material represented here. It's simply awe-inspiring what one can accomplish with their own hands. A lump of clay can turn to me if you strangle it with enough enthusiasm. Look what we built. We created life itself, Henry. Not just on a silver screen, but in the hearts of those we entertain with our fancy moving pictures. But when the tickets stopped selling, when the next big thing came along, only the monsters remained. Shadows of the past. But you can save them, Henry. You can peel it all away. You see, there's only one thing Bindi has never known. He was there for his beginning. But he's never seen the end. the end. And there's Bendy in his final form. He's about to evolve, guys. Uh, this is one of like my favourite parts of the game because I really enjoy his sort of alien-looking final form. And of course, just an unexpected moment, I think. I don't think many of us were expecting this to happen, but it's certainly cool to see it. got to play that final reel in order to banish him for good and put an end to his story. Okay, let's uh, let's get going. Let's do this. This bit can be kind of tricky sometimes. We need to find all the switches. Pull them. It's an instant death if we get hit by Bendy here. There he is. Oh, okay, that was close. But we're fine. We're good. There's another switch. Okay, we can go, we can go, we can go. We've got one more switch here. Oh no, I got got! But I think I opened up the door just in time. Yes, we opened up the doors. Okay, good. So we actually hit all the switches there before we died, which means we can go straight onto the next section of the game, through these tunnels, and into this room here. So this is pretty much the very final part of the game now in terms of fighting anything so we just have to turn this valve, get the ink flowing through these tubes and now we have to get Bendy basically to ram these separate tubes. Just hide behind these tubes like this. There you go, that's one. Okay, behind this one next. Come on, Bendy. Oh man, we need to get him to run into it though. There you go, he's just smashed it, good. Behind this one. The third tube, come on. Excellent, right. Come on, big boy, we're gonna get you to run into this final tube and then we can escape. Smash it. Nice. Boom. Excellent. Now we escape from this doorway. And back into the hall here. And we can finally play that last reel to end this madness. 
done. This will put an end to Bendy's story as you can see. A car how do you wrap up a cartoon? Of course, you show it the end of its cartoon and then it has to uh, cease to exist. So long, Bendy, I'll see you in Dark Revival, I guess. We awaken now, of course, in a very sort of more photorealistic looking environment, which doesn't look like a cartoon anymore. This is Joey's apartment, and you can see all of the stuff that he has now, like the Bendy plushie, the gear, the book, they all look like real items in the real world. Even the poster here looks very much like how a real worn poster would look. So it's obvious we're not in the studio anymore and not in the ink machine anymore. Now you can see on here we have like lots of messages from characters such as Wally Franks. Since leaving the studio he says, I have to say it was a big surprise getting a letter from you after all these years. I'm surprised you even remember me from back in the old days at the studio. I mostly just swept up the place. I'm doing good here in Florida. Lots of sun for me and the missus. Hope you're doing good too. Sorry to hear the studio closed down. You made some great little cartoons there. They was good for some laughs. Okay, I've got to wrap this up. The grandkids want a lift of a beach, so I'm out of here. That's from Wally Franks to Joey Drew. And then over here, we also have one from Alison Connor, which is, of course, Alison Pendle after she married Thomas Connor. And it says, Joey, it's been quite a while since my last letter. Been busy with work at Archgate Films. Archgate Films is, of course, referenced in the latest Bendy book. And I've made a theory. If you want to go and check that out, I'll link that at the end of this video. The studio ordered another sequel, so I've been spending many hours in the recording booth again. It's fun though. Tom is doing good, thanks for asking. He's always tinkering on something. Mostly he's still upset about someone stealing one of his dusty inventions from your old studio, but he'll get over it. Have a good new year, Joey. I'll send you another recipe soon. So this sort of hints that perhaps the bacon soup recipe that Joey got his hands on was from Alison uh, Connor or Alison Pendle to begin with. It also hints that... Joey was contacting his old workers, which seems very out of character for him, in order to lure them back to the studio and have them reborn from the ink machine, much like Henry is. Which is why I think the whole game takes place within the cartoon world, inside the ink machine in Joey's apartment. But that's just another theory for me there. You can also see that the studio originally closed down to, due to bankruptcy here, guys. You can see some designs for Bendyland. And over here, you can see basically a whole host of alternate storyboards from the game. And in here, there's actually a really cool secret you can barely make out. On that newspaper, if you look carefully, it says that a cartoonist died basically recently. Now that could be referencing Henry himself, because of course, Joey keeps bringing Henry back to life through the ink machine. With that said guys, we're now gonna head on to see Joey himself. Henry, so soon. I didn't expect you for another hour yet. Now you're just trying to impress me. But I know, I know, you have questions. You always do. The only important question is this. Who are we, Henry? I thought I knew who I was. But the success starved me. Nothing left but lines on a page. In the end, we followed two different roads of our own making. You, a lovely family. Me, a crooked empire. And my road burned. I let our creations become my life. The truth is, you were always so good at pushing, old friend. Pushing me to do the right thing. You should have pushed a little harder. Henry, come visit the old workshop. There's something I need to show you. All right, Joey, I'm here. Let's see if we can find what you wanted me to see. So you can see there, guys, of course, Henry is on a loop a never-ending loop and he keeps being reborn again and again into the ink machine to try and keep Bendy at bay over and over again as the cycle repeats. Obviously that's been orchestrated by Joey himself 
he continues to use Henry, his old partner, as a pawn in his game. It's kind of a sad ending, but hopefully in Dark Revival, perhaps we will see a happier one and a more upbeat resolution to this story as, the, as it all continues. But as you can see here, guys, we have got the outro credits showing some really cool animations here. So we'll let these play out and then we have one final scene to watch, which I will let you guys enjoy. It's been really cool to revisit this game, remember all the cool moments and of course experience it one last time before the release of the next one. So, some people have speculated that that voice could be the voice of Audrey as a child, um, which it could be, but I just don't know, but it's obviously Joey's niece. That sounds kind of like it's, I just think it's referencing Henry's daughter looking at a picture from her father, not knowing the horrible things that Joey has done to him, trapping him inside the ink machine to do his bidding. But either way guys, that was my replay of Bendy and the Ink Machine and I'm sure we're all looking forward together to Bendy and the Dark Revival and some future updates perhaps for Boris and the Dark Survival 2. Perhaps we'll finally find out what the heck is in those secret boxes, um, which I'm sure is going to be tied to Dark Revival. But with that said, this is the end of this video today and if you have enjoyed my playthrough, please leave a like, a comment down below and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. And check out my other Bendy videos on my Bendy playlist including a host of theories and secrets videos. But that's all for today so I will wrap up by saying goodbye, thanks for watching once again and I will see you all on the next video.